Okay, last question. Uh, we're going long, but it's okay. This one's from Amy. Uh, she says, thanks so much for all of your excellence. That's amazing um, mm. that yeah, you say that. That's so kind. Thank you, Amy. Uh, she says, I love your podcast and listen to it religiously. The blog posts are great too. I learned so much from you guys. Thank you. So I'm confused about heart rate. <clears throat> My understanding is that having a low resting heart rate is an indicator of good fitness. But then I hear a lot about how cyclists worry during workouts if their heart rates don't go high enough. Any clarification on when lower heart rate is desirable and when it's not would be really helpful to me in general and particularly as it relates to FTP testing and riding. Thanks again from Amy. Uh, you want to kick this one off, Amber? How, how should yeah. we go about it? Yeah. Um, so first of all, thanks for the kind words. That's really awesome. I'm glad to hear that this has been helpful for you. Um, high and low heart rate is always relative to the individual. And we've talked about this before, but I think one of probably the crux of where the confusion is coming from is that generally a low resting heart rate relative to the individual. So resting heart rate, like lower for you, if your personal resting heart rate comes down, that indicates usually an increase in fitness. So that's generally a good thing. Like having a low resting heart rate correlates pretty well with your fitness level. Another way that heart rate can correlate with fitness is how quickly your heart rate recovers following an, an effort. So if you're doing a set of intervals, how quickly does your heart rate drop back down after it's increased uh, during an interval effort? Um, that's another good indicator. So the faster your heart rate recovers, the more fit you probably are. So those are two really good indicators of fitness. What gets a little bit confusing is your max heart rate doesn't change with fitness the way that those two indicators do. So um, max heart rate is mostly genetic and it's very individual and it really doesn't correlate well with fitness. And the other thing is your max heart rate in cycling could be different than your max heart rate in swimming or different than your max heart rate in cross country skiing. So it's also activity dependent. Um, so it, it, it does get a little bit confusing because if you have a low resting heart rate, it doesn't mean that your max heart rate is going to change either. So like if your resting heart rate decreases by 10% after a month of training, it doesn't mean that your max heart rate is also going to decrease by 10%. Um, and again, your max heart rate is relatively unchanged by changes in fitness. And so that's again, why it's not a great indicator of fitness, but it doesn't correlate necessarily with changes in your resting heart rate. Um, so that's a little bit confusing. And then I'm kind of, I want to answer why people might be concerned if their heart rate isn't getting high enough during training. And this will correlate also, um, or at least this will help you in terms of testing and, and uh, training with heart rate. So the first thing is that heart rate is a lagging indicator. So if you have a, train, a power meter and a heart rate monitor, you can start an interval by increasing your power to your target power out output for that interval. But you'll notice that your heart rate won't come up at exactly the same rate as your power. In fact, it might take 10, 15, 30 seconds in some cases for your heart rate to come up into its target zone during an effort. Um, so the fact that it's lagging indicator might be part of why somebody was saying, oh, I was, you know, I had to wait for my heart rate to come up or it wasn't coming up fast enough. It's just, that's how heart rates work. It's a lagging indicator of effort. Um, the other thing is when you're training, you start to get a feel for where your heart rate usually is in a given zone. So if I'm training with a power meter and a heart rate monitor and I'm doing sweet spot, I'm probably thinking, okay, my, my heart rate's going to be maybe 155. Usually when I'm deep into a sweet spot interval, that's roughly where my heart rate usually is for that type of effort. And again, this is highly individual, right? So what is a sweet spot heart rate for me normally is going to be really different for somebody else. And that's fine. It may not have anything to do with our relative fitness levels. This is a very genetically determined um, characteristic. So when you know what your heart rate usually is for a given level of effort, if on a day, like I normally say, okay, my heart rate's usually 155. If I'm doing a 20 minute sweet spot effort, I know it's a lagging indicator. So if I'm 10 minutes into a sweet spot effort and I'm hitting my power target, but my heart rate's only at 140, when your heart rate is low relative to where it normally is during training, that can be an indicator of fatigue and it can be an indicator for the onset of illness. So you might not be having mm. symptoms of being sick yet, but it might mean that your body is fighting something off and it could indicate just that your training stress load is really high and you're feeling fatigued from the training. So that might be um, one of the causes for concern why somebody might be concerned that their heart rate isn't high enough during an effort. It's also a sign of increased fitness. 
which is yes, can be that's annoying. What I was gonna say too. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. So uh, there's so many moving levers, right? Yeah. Like, like it's it's just really tricky because that's one of the things that you'll notice as you go through a training block and you're getting closer to that next FTP test. A lot of the time, you'll notice that at that same intensity, your heart rate isn't as high. And it's likely if it, it, if you're getting, following your training, hitting your marks, recovering well, it's likely that it's not as cause of fatigue. It's likely that you're just getting fitter. And hydration status changes it and caffeine and the mm -hmm. time of day that you're training and how and excited sure, you are. I can, you can, I've been doing group, you know, I'll do group workouts or any kind of workout and inside of a sweet spot interval, you can tell when I visualize the finish in a crit because my heart rate <laughs> yes. literally goes up. <laughs> and then goes back down and like, I get adrenaline. Do you do, you do mm -hmm. that too? Totally. Yeah. Totally. Yeah, totally. If I'm watching beats. bike races, my heart rate goes up. I get the adrenaline rush. And it's just, <clears throat> <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Or you get a message or somebody like you, you need to enter, like focus on something else with your mind and you'll watch your heart rate just whoop, spike right up when you have to, you know, focus on something else or do something else. So it, so many variables end up affecting that one. It, it's really tricky for sure. So, yeah. So as, um, as far as applying sorry. heart rate to, to testing, I think the most important thing is to understand that it's a lagging indicator and that a variety of factors could potentially be influencing your heart rate on any given day. So you want to just, you want to take it with a bit of a grain of salt. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Chad, you, you brought up an interesting point on this one. Cause there's kind of like an assumption that like, um, your heart has a finite amount of beats Yeah, and, and, <clears throat> and training, like you're, you're using up your beats. Like, <laughs> yep. like why would you do it? <laughs> yep. This is, this is kind of a playful answer because this was supposed to be a rapid fire question until Amber sicked her big brain on it. So <laughs> I was coming from something that would have been quick. Her, her, her response was terrific, but I didn't, I didn't go deep. I went, Playful. So there, cool. there is this notion. So I've already bagged on people who gravitate toward the comfort zone. So now I'm going to bag about <laughs> people who don't even exercise. And, and one, of their, <laughs> one of their excuses is that we only have so many heartbeats in a lifetime, which initially you want to laugh at. But surprisingly, there's, there's a fair amount of data that kind of backs that up, which is a little creepy. But it doesn't make the case for avoiding exercise. In fact, if anything, it makes the case for exercising. So, and, and most of this comes from uh, the Haywire Heart. So Leonard Zinn is really the, the resource on this, um, except for this first statistic, which says that the average male or female, the, their heart rate per minute, so their BPM for males is 72, for, for females is 80. And this is from the Essential Atlas of Physiology back in 2005. Can't imagine that's changed a lot since then. So <clears throat> if you do the math, and, and I've, I've done it already, I'm not going to do it on the fly here. Per day, that adds up to about 100,000 beats for a man, about 115,000 beats for a woman. Per year, 38 million and 42 million, respectively. And then per lifetime, per 80-year lifetime, 3 billion, 3.4 billion. Okay? I'm just so going to hit pause here really quick and say, thank you, Hart. That is amazing. It's <laughs> That's incredible, incredible, right? It's incredible. Wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, <laughs> we Holy could, smokes. We could dwell on that for a while. It'll, uh, that'll break yeah. your brain. Okay, so... Leonard Zinn says regarding athletes, if you sleep at 40 BPM, and that's not an, un, uh, an uncommon uh, low heart rate for, for, for most athletes, 40 BPM is where a lot of us reside, especially in our younger years. So say you sleep eight hours at 40 BPM, and then during your waking hours, it nudges up to 60 BPM, and then you do three hours of training at 125 BPM. Now you're coming in at 88,000 daily beats, regardless of male or female. 32 million per year, 2.5 billion per lifetime. So already you've seen a big drop. And then Zinn pins the average workout BPM at about 125 because what he notices is that even with heart rate extremes where we jack it way the heck up, and then it, but the, but then we tie it to the effort duration curve where you can only hold it so high for so long. So it, you know it, it all kind of balances out. You weave in recoveries where it's really low, warm ups and cool downs where it's kind of all over the place. The average still commonly falls somewhere in the 125 BPM ballpark for workouts. So we're just going to work with that number and just trust. Even six hours a day at that 125 BPM average still is less beats than, than 80 years at 72 BPM. So even with these extremes, even with really long workouts at you know effectively double the heart rate most people will spend their day, we still see less lifetime heartbeats over the course of 80 years as endurance athletes. So point is, endurance athletes mathematically see less lifetime heartbeats than sedentary folks. It's probably some cardiovascular fitness is the reason why they're living longer and not the amount of beats, but that is still interesting. Mm -hmm. And two, uh, it's just a fun way to look at it. 
We should yeah. have, if you should have asked me this before, because I would have looked at all of our data. We have like almost 90 million workouts in our system yeah. or rides that we could see the average heart rate and probably have more data than uh, Zinn does. I don't know how much data he has, but I don't oh, know if yeah, 90 yeah. million rides that so you this. can just do a query and figure out what the average is and a bell curve of what uh, kind of where things land inside of it for like an hour plus workout. That would be interesting. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine the level of anxiety if that was your perspective of like, <laughs> yeah. I need to save my heartbeats? Oh my gosh. <laughs> like every day. <laughs> and then the anxiety would make it go higher. Oh, it'd be a terrible spiral. You'd just never get out of it. So <clears throat> good to know, Chad. Thanks for, for calming that down for me. The, uh, um, <laughs> too, what, what Amber said on this too, about how it's so, it's dependent on your uh, genetics. And then as your fitness change, things changes. This is why gym equipment that uses heart rates to estimate calorie burn can be wildly off for people, especially people. Uh, I actually think that it's probably like the less fit you are, the more it exaggerates it because it, they want you to use their like elliptical machine. It's like, I burned 700 calories in an hour. That is a fit person who can burn 700 calories in an hour. And uh, mm -hmm. anyways, just anything that uses heart rate to do calories because of all those things that we just mentioned, they can all impact it unless you're in the middle of a bell curve where their algorithm is to do this. It can be uh, very, very inaccurate.